Make sure to be a member on the channel, link is in the description. Hello guys, once again it's Matt and today we have another video. A popular request apparently is the Gloucester Javelin. So we are going to talk a little bit about this amazing but very very ugly aircraft. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, but yeah. Uh, so before we get into it, uh, make sure to sub and be a member if you want to help the channel. And click the little bell icon and then you can uh, receive any videos that I post so yeah check it out everything and let's get into it so the javelin the Gloucester javelin made by the same company that made the meteor in the 40s uh, it is a very well-known company and a very well-known um, machine uh, the javelin I mean uh, we have the javelin mark 9 in the game which is kind of basically the last variant of the of the javelin uh, but it is a very odd aircraft. Uh, I mean, it's complicated, you know. Uh, it is an aircraft that entered service apparently in 1955, which is very, very late if you think about the performance of this aircraft. Around the same era of the MiG-19 and the and F-100, the MiG-19 being one year earlier. So, in performance-wise, it was very bad, you know. Uh, and but. There's, there's one thing that the, the Javelin is actually better than these aircraft, uh, it's the radar and the missiles. Uh, so, yeah, it's kind of an intercept, kind of no, it, it is an interceptor made for the Royal Air Force uh, to intercept bombers, high altitude bombers. It has two afterburning engines, uh, which are the, the Armstrong Sid Lace of Fire engines, the Mark 209s, which, and the 209 the 210s apparently, the, the 209 from the left engine and the right one is the 210 uh, but they are very very powerful engines uh, in general they're very very strong uh, I mean with you know optimal uh, uh, airflow and stuff like that it can get to 56 kilonewtons which is very very strong and it has basically two of them so yeah it's a very very strong engine uh, but the problem that we have here which in back in the day was not the biggest problem, uh, but uh, I mean in real life, I mean. Uh, but it is the wing design and the way that the aircraft is designed. Uh, it is just such a, a large uh, wing uh, that the aircraft has that is just complicated to not break at high speeds and turning. So yeah, it's one of the things that you have to be careful, you know. And but in general, a very very capable aircraft, very. Weird design, and when I mean capable, uh, don't get me wrong, it's not OP by any means. It's very hard to fly this aircraft, especially stock. Uh, but once you get it spaded, it's really nice. Uh, it's just that the way that it flies, you have to kind of get used to it. It has a learning curve. And if you know me, I freaking love interceptors. So this one is... It has a kind of a, a special place for me, you know, just because it, didn't, it is a very early interceptor with very early radar. The detection range of this radar is like, it can be like 12 to 13 kilometers for a Vultur or something of that size. Uh, so our fighter is like 8 or 7 kilometers sometimes. So it's very limited, uh, but it is better than all of the other radars that we have in this BR or even in the range of the BR at 8.3 uh, which is kind of yeah it's kind of weird but it is what it is and yeah this is basically the idea behind this aircraft An interceptor very strong radar for the time very strong powerful engines which can make you climb a lot and yeah just be fast and you're probably going to out accelerate everything that you face uh, but it has some limitations. Uh, the missiles are always uh, the best option to bring. Uh, you can carry uh, two cannons with 400 rounds, uh, the Aidens, and four missiles, uh, these, the fire, the fire streaks. Uh, but uh, you can carry also four uh, cannons instead of two with two fire streaks. But I think the Eden with 400 rounds is it's enough, you know, and the four missiles are pretty good at this BR. Uh, they are m way more capable than the, the A9Bs that you sometimes face. 
So yeah, it is a very weird missile, uh, has a very short range, so don't expect killing people for m more than 2 kilometers if they are getting away from you. Uh, but it is very capable. So yeah, this, this would be the loadout that I use. There are targets, of course, for the Edens, and just use it as an interceptor. Try to climb, try to, at the start of the match, get speed from uh, below, uh, flying very low to the ground, and then you actually can climb and uh, once you get to like seven to eight hundred kilometers per hour uh, or like 400 knots at least uh, maybe a little bit more you can uh, actually climb and maintain the climb rate um, a very good climb rate for this BR uh, you have to remember this aircraft even though it doesn't have the the maximum speed that you need to get away from people uh, the wings actually break at a thousand three uh, 35 kilometers per hour uh, but you have the acceleration to out, out accelerate everything that you face basically everything the engines are very very strong engines so the point in using this aircraft is to actually be an interceptor try to climb and try to get people that are flying high if there is nobody flying high anymore that you kill everybody or something like that uh, just try to get people from up above open your air brakes and do dives on the air to targets you know don't dogfight please don't dogfight even though it has one of the best roll rates of this br uh, which can be a very cool tool to have uh, against a fighter like a mig 15 or even a saber you can win uh, out rolling them and making them overshoot it's complicated because after you make them overshoot you will basically have no energy and basically doesn't have any energy retention the only thing that it has in performance is the actual engines which makes you kind of go to that speed faster than other people but you lose a lot of people if you try to turn so it's kind of one of those aircraft that you cannot actually clutch with it it's really hard to clutch with it because it, the, the weapons are very limited because the way that they are on the wings and the missiles are of course very limited because they are very early missiles uh, but normally the best skills that you're going to have is are uh, bombers uh, the Q4s, the IL-28s, the 214s that a lot of 214s for example um, aircraft like this and of course the uh, normal non-paying attention player that is dogfighting with uh, another people uh, is beyond that it's really hard to get kills like I said before in other videos I really don't like the word support fighter but in War Thunder it kinda became one uh, but it, it, I don't I don't the thing is uh, support fighters don't exist you know all the aircraft in the game and all the aircraft in, in the real world uh, has a, they have a, a purpose to exist and a mission to do so I don't think he, a support fighter is a role that exists, you know, a lot of people say about the support fighter, but support fighters don't exist. And instead this is a, an interceptor, which normally in War Thunder kind of became a, a word uh, that it's synonym to a support fighter. But uh, anyway, it's the, the way that you work, you know, in the aircraft. You're going to try to get people by surprise, try to destroy the bombers at high altitude, just try to climb as much as possible, six, seven thousand meters. Uh, this aircraft can go to plus ten thousand, but uh, the max altitude is like fifteen. But you don't need to, to climb that high, and it's going to take a while because you know it's a very strong engine. Uh, they lack the, the the aerodynamic. The aircraft they lack like the ability to do that, but uh, very effective, effectively. But anyway, it's. One of those aircraft, you know, try to get people by surprise and bombers, especially. It is one an aircraft that it's it's kind of a I, I like this aircraft because it's kind of a philosophical thing about these fifties, you know. It's a transition between the old first generation fighters to the second and third generation fighters, jet fighters that we see. Uh, this aircraft will, in the day was one of the most advanced and more modern aircraft that existed but because of many reasons uh, it took a while to actually be introduced in, in, the, in the Royal Air Force 
so it became obsolete very quickly and it phased out very quickly so it is one of those aircraft that it's so unique and so weird that became an icon kind of you know and it is probably the first interceptor all weather interceptor with the designed role as an interceptor you know uh, you have other aircraft like that but in the early 50s uh, the aircraft that we had in the world was the, the Sabre, the MiG-19, you know, uh, aircraft like that, there were fighters or fighter bombers or stuff like that and this was a sign of the future, you know, it was an aircraft that was uh, with many design flaws maybe but um, still one of the pioneers for this type of aircraft and became one of the probably the stepping grounds of the, the first stepping grounds for the interceptor role in the Cold War era. So a very interesting aircraft after this the Royal Air Force actually introduced about a year later the English Electric Lightning which w had a better radar even though it was a smaller radar I think but it was a better radar uh, lighter better engines better dynamics made by other company of course but so yeah it kind of was too late for the party you know uh, but it didn't it wasn't a, a complete failure you know the english actually bought and built about 700 of them so it is not like a, a very uh, prototype kind of thing but it is just an aircraft that was too late to the party as you said before in war thunder it was added a while back and once it was added, it already was too late, you know. Uh, <laughs> it was added together with the MiG-19 and the F-100, which were like a comparable aircraft for the time in real life. So they were added together, but the MiG-19 just completely destroyed everything. And F-100 also was better than this. So it became kind of a, a, f a joke, kind of, in War Thunder, you know. But still, uh, a very fun aircraft. I, I really enjoy this type of aircraft. It's so weird and unique. You have to try it, man. So give it an, another try. It's easy to, to grind it out because it's an 8.3 aircraft. It's just stock. It's kind of hard to fly, but it is very good and very fun. If you once you're spaded, you have a lot of speed uh, in acceleration, of course. Everything else is just bad in aircraft, right? and the missiles are pretty good for the VR. So yeah, I hope you enjoy a little bit of the Javelin, a Mark 9 in War Thunder, and I hope you enjoy, enjoy it, uh, I see you guys on the next one, and make sure to sub, and bye guys.